So with our wall assembly here, we have the two by eight framing, which is gonna get dense packed full of cellulose. And then we have this exterior rigid wood fiber insulation from Styco that goes onto the building. We really like this stuff first off because it's carbon storing. Second off, it's very permeable, which allows that moisture to pass freely through the assembly. And it also has another benefit that we're really just starting to understand. And that's something called specific heat capacity. What that is, is that it's a material's inherent need for energy in order to raise its temperature. So what I mean by that is, is that it takes more energy to raise the temperature of this than it does of say a mineral wool exterior insulation or a foam insulation. So what that translates into is that when we have the ups and downs of temperatures is it starts to even those out. So we get smaller peaks and valleys and the temperature swings across our assembly. What that means is that it, we have a more stable building environment, which allows our mechanical systems to perform better and allows our clients to be more comfortable. So not only do we have the R value, but we also have to pay attention to the permeability and the specific heat capacity of our materials if we're really trying to fine tune our assemblies. This material, it's two and three eighths inch, 60 millimeters. It's a European product. Uh, it comes in these like 29 by eight foot sheets tongue and groove together. One of the beauties of this stuff is, is that it can go together. It doesn't have to fall on solid. Your seams don't have to be backed. So as long as you've got a complete tongue and groove and they click together, you're good. You can break in the middle of a cavity with no issues. So the way this goes on the wall is we start off and it's hidden here behind this piece of edge metal, but we tape from our rim down to our foundation. We have a gasket in there, but this is belt and suspenders acting as our air seal and also as a, a flashing in the event that water should ever make it back there. Next, we have this piece of edge metal here that we had bent up that's acting number one as a ledger, but is also a two-part closure at the bottom of the wall. So we put this on level around the building, we shoot it with a transit, find our points, and we snap lines and we start attaching this metal. This gives us a starting point that all of our insulation rests on. So we have a nice clean line all the way around the building. Goes on with screws and these little washer setups here. These are little thermally broken washers. We only need to put a couple of these on per sheet because it's really just tacking it onto the wall right now because the next phase for us is gonna be to come along and uh, add one by three strapping across here and that gets screwed. And that's what really clamps the assembly together. And that's what will carry all of our cladding on the outside of the building. It's also acting as the rain screen for the building. So any moisture that passes through can freely ventilate through that cavity up and out. And then any water that ever makes it through the cladding can fully drain out to the bottom. This edge metal at the bottom serves a couple of purposes. Number one is it's gonna be perforated, which allows that air to move through and that water to drain out. It's also gonna act as a physical stop for any pests or you know, mice, uh, insects, anything like that from making its way into that uh, rain screen cavity and making itself a new home.